Hey, how about you, everybody? Welcome into another edition of the Auburn Live Show. We keep it simple here. This is the recruiting uh, edition, also known as the Shrivel Pod. I'm your host, Jeffrey Lee, Senior Recruiting Editor at Auburn Live on 3, and today I'm joined by our recruiting analyst, Cole Pinkston. Cole, how the hell are you? Man, you know, I'm, I'm feeling refreshed today. Yeah. I finally refreshed is good. Got a little sleep. No uh, kidding, with a baby. Man, he's he's starting to get all the way through the night. Oh, congratulations. Finally. Yeah, big big deal, big deal. Didn't realize how awesome that was. Took it for granted. But is, he look, craw- is he crawling? Man, he's close. He's getting close. He's not there yet, though. But <laughs> I'm sure that, that brings a whole lot, a whole new dynamic to it. But, yeah. It's about, it's yeah, about to get shaved fun. A little bit, shaved a little bit. Got the haircut. You know, I don't look so homeless. Oh, on this. look at you. Yeah, feeling good, man. Yeah, you got that pimp limp going. I saw you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no. Hey, well, big, big week this week for everybody uh, listening. Uh, one week until signing day, Auburn's in on a lot of top recruits. Really don't know a lot other than they're in the top two to three for a lot of a lot of these guys. Um, we've been writing about it. If you're not a subscriber to Auburn Live on three, you should be, especially this week. You can sign up and get a free week all the way to signing day. After that, it's only about eight bucks a month. Can't beat it. Like a what? Like a cute puppy. <laughs> well, let's get started, Cole. We've... We've been tracking these coaches flying all over the country. We've got yep. in-home visits this week. We've got official visits today. We got official visits this weekend. A lot going on with seven days until National Signing Day. I shouldn't say National Signing Day. Technically, it's the early signing period, but as we all know, it's basically the new National Signing Day. Cole, what are your thoughts right now? Uh, you know, I'm, the closer it gets, the more you question – how the new guy is going to close, right? That's just that's just the way it is. I think. I mean, you just we just don't have an idea. That's the only thing. You don't with Gus Malzahn. At, you know, after two or three seasons, you knew how he's going to close. He's going to get a few guys that he's after. He's going to miss on a few, and uh, have a pretty good class. Well, right now, um, Brian Harson's got a potentially. I mean, really good class lined up here, or could be a big letdown. Sure. You know, or I'm just being honest. I mean, you, you know, everybody wants positive news, but we're just going to be realist here. I mean. A, a large spectrum here, right? Yes. I mean, huge. Worst, worst case scenario is bad. Yeah. I mean, you miss yeah. out on all these guys that Auburn's in on right now, and you're, you're looking at top 30 at best. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, look, and, and let me be clear. I, I think they're going to get a few of these guys. Sure. And I think they're going to get some good ones out of this class. Are they going to get everybody that's on the slate, everybody that's kind of, uh, you know, that, that we're thinking might go to Auburn? I don't know. That's that's where I'm questioning it. But will they get some good players? Oh, yeah. I think there's some good ones out there. I think they're, they're going to close on some of those. It's just can you take that next step? Can you take it to the next level maybe that, that, that the previous staff didn't do before? Because there's a few guys on here that I'm looking at that really could come in and contribute early. If you land in most of those, you're in good shape, I think. Yeah, and you're doing this in your first full class after coming off a six and six season. Uh, you haven't had a lot of chance, a lot of time to develop relationships. But to have Auburn in the position that they're in with with one week and left until the signing period begins is very impressive. Um, the staff, what, what what they've done, what they've positioned themselves to be, and I talked about that big spectrum. With, with, with swinging and missing on the majority of these guys to, you know, signing the majority of these guys, you're talking top 10. I mean, it, really, you're talking top 10. And yep. then anywhere yep. in between, you're looking at top 15, definitely top 20. And I feel like at this point, worst case scenario, like you said, we're, uh, we're expecting Auburn to get at least a couple of these guys, which I think top guarantees a top 20. And yeah. Yeah, and of course we don't know how other schools are going to finish, but we're talking about looking at Auburn class and going, "That's a top twenty class." I don't care what the, what the rankings say. Yeah, exactly. And I'll put it this way: I, I I did a little bit of math. Let's just say you know Auburn's got ten or so spots to fill in this class. Uh, I just said, let me take the top ten guys that are possibilities, and let's see where Auburn's ranking would be. And it put us, it put Auburn in the top ten. So, at where it sits right now, everybody's going to add more people. 
I'm just saying, if you grab the top 10 guys that you're after right now, that's how high it could go. It's going to, it's going to fall back a little bit as people add more, but that's my point. I mean, there's some really good players left and there's some really good players. They got a chance to get. So, you know, we'll see what happens. I, I just, I'm eager to see what happens. I want to yeah. know. know how it closes, you know? Let's, let's take a quick rundown in each position. Some of the guys that are still on the board, some of the guys Auburn still has a shot with who they've already had committed. Uh, we'll start with the quarterback position. Auburn has Holden Gurner, four-star quarterback from Savannah, committed. And we've heard that they're considering taking a second one. Now, I wrote quickly after Tanner Bailey, the four-star quarterback from Gordo, decommitted from Oregon, Oregon's – Class is going to shit. So is Oklahoma's. Was it Oklahoma? <laughs> was it Oklahoma? Yeah, Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma's lost basically everybody they had in the twenty three yeah, class. Te- and Texas A and M is just ripping them, dude. They are. Yeah. Um, so if Auburn decides to take a, sec- a second quarterback, which they're seriously considering, I-, I jumped at Tanner Bailey only because he grew up a big Auburn fan. We've seen him on the visit list this season. I think he came to one game. I think it was the Georgia yeah, game, maybe. I believe so. Didn't really think much of it at the time. He was locked in with Oregon. Mario Cristobal yeah. was there. No reason to think he was uh, there for anything other than to see a college team he grew up cheering for. Yeah. But you've got to throw him in the mix. You've got to throw the decommitment from Florida, Evers. Yeah, yeah. That was one that, that got an offer pretty early pretty close to around the same time that, that Gurner got the offer from Auburn, um, you know, didn't last a, whole, a long time because quarterbacks don't take much time to right. join classes these days. Man, it's, it's crazy, isn't it, that seven days, eight days before signing day, he says, all right, I'm out. <laughs> Let's see, who, who's out there? <laughs> I mean, maybe I thought about it more than that, but it just seems like crazy timing. And he's well, the one thing- of the top in the country. And the thing about Auburn and Colin, I talked about this before we went on the air, but Auburn is going up against these schools this late in the period that are, you know, reshuffling their, their coachings. You've got LSU, who Auburn is in on Jadarian Rim, the cornerback, Trey, Trevante Citizen, um, Austin Osbury. So LSU is having a coaching change. Then you've got Florida firing Darren Mullen, bringing in Billy Napier. So a lot of things going on. And uh, so a lot of things are up in the air right now. Yeah, uh, but we talked. We talked about Bailey. We talked about Evers, but you, you got to throw the transfer portal in there as well. I mean, does Auburn need two high school guys? Is it? Is it? Uh, is it dependent on what Bo does? I mean, who knows? I, I don't. Does Auburn wait and maybe sign somebody in in, in the February signing period? That's still things I I don't really. I'm not sure of. It I was easy to if if Bo does come back to Auburn, then does another quarterback leave? <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. You've got to lose somebody, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. just just mathematically speaking. Seems like it. Yeah. Seems like Auburn's gonna be down and the quality of the quarterbacks on the roster. TJ if TJ Finley's your backup, what does that say yeah. for the other guys? And I I know I I love D Davis. I just don't know where he fits in this offense. If, yeah, and it, you know, it he was a Gus guy. Could depend on you know what they decide to do in terms of offensive coordinator and and who's calling plays. And uh, we've been told a few times that Harson does like Demetrius Davis. He loves his competitive edge. You know, so uh, we'll see. But he did fairly turn- well in that A day game too. He did. I mean, every every time he gets a chance, he does well. I don't, I don't think he's he's ever gonna not show out because he's just so competitive. But and he's got some good athleticism and skills too. It's, it, but like you're saying, it, I don't know. It it just seems like there's a chance a quarterback could be taken from the portal. I don't know. I don't know how good that chance is, but that's just the feel, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Well, let's uh, move on to the running back position. Auburn has four star running back Damari Austin committed. We know Auburn is high, high, high on Trevante Citizen, four-star running. I think he's a top five running back in the country. This dude's elite. A former LSU commitment, now looking at Auburn, Florida, and <clears throat> excuse me, and LSU's still in it, especially now that Frank Wilson 
yeah. is back on staff, who is a killer recruiter. So that'll be interesting. We know Auburn went in home on Tuesday with Trevante Citizen. They went to his school, Brian Harson, Derek Mason, Zach Etheridge, Trevon Reed was even there, and, of course, Carnell Williams was there. Uh, the defensive guys there for – I mean, I'm sure they were there just to uh, just to flex on Trevante and how important he is to them. But there was also Reed Curley, Curly Reed, sorry, Curly, Curly Reed, 2023 cornerback from Lake Charles Prep, picked up an offer from Auburn. Uh, so all eyes, in my opinion, right now on the running back position are on Trevante Citizen and what he does. Uh, we know he took an official visit to Auburn back in June. He has not returned, although he's been on a couple of lists. Uh, for games this year, did not make it. I don't think that's the end-all, be-all in his recruitment. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if he goes anywhere this weekend for a, a visit, whether uh, official or unofficial. Yeah. But I think it, running back recruitment is all eyes on, are, are on him because I think whatever happens with him uh, will depend on whether or not Auburn makes a move on Justin Williams, who announced, I think, Monday or Tuesday, Monday night? No, Tuesday morning. Yeah. that he is down to Auburn and Tennessee. Georgia Tech is out. We were asked on the board, you know, what, what are the odds of Justin Williams? I think Auburn – if Auburn wants him, it'll get him. If it doesn't, he'll go to Tennessee. If he goes yeah. to Tennessee, then that's probably good news for Auburn because that means Trevante Citizen um, is likely a part of this class. So, things to watch there at tight end which we, we, we've been saying for probably the past two months is that Auburn has a commitment from Michael Riley Ducker, four-star tight end from Nebraska, uh, but continues to keep Colston Loveland warm, the four-star tight end from Idaho, who Harson and those guys were recruiting Bedell at Boise State. Yep. Uh, he was also on a couple, at least one visitor. I don't know if he's on the list, but he, he had – at yeah, least tentatively was, scheduled an official visit. Yeah, I think he was uh, planning on officially visiting for the Iron Bowl and then decided to go to the Michigan-Ohio State game instead. That's right. That's right. Same for yeah. Deuce Spurlock, the Michigan commitment Correct. from Huntsville or North Alabama linebacker. So, uh, you know, th does Loveland come in this weekend for an official visit? I don't know. I'm like you, Cole. I think he's pretty much locked into Michigan. I think Michigan – there's the season that they had the win over Ohio State. Colson Loveland was there. Deuce Spurlock was there. Probably be very tough to pull him, but I'm going to keep an eye on him to visit this weekend. He may or may not. I don't know if he doesn't. Then it's done deal. Uh, we we think um, we think Brian Harson is going to see him today, Wednesday, for an in-home visit. So maybe you know Auburn's still in play. Who knows? I'm not going to spend a lot of time on him though. Right. Uh, let's say wide receiver is very interesting at this point. You've it is. Jay Fair committed. You've got Omari Kelly committed. And then you've got at least three guys we know Auburn is actively recruiting. Camden Brown, we talked about Monday on the show. He came in for an official visit. He's a big wide receiver from South Florida. Georgia has come into the picture as well. He's going to go on an official visit this weekend to Georgia. He's a former Pitt commitment, but he is – he's very good. He's very good. Yeah, and, and by the way, if you're not already following, I think it's Jeremy Crabtree from On3. Crabby. Yeah. No, no, no. It's, G it's Gary Hamilton. Jerry Hamilton. Jerry Hamilton. If you're not following him, give him a follow because he's covering the Alabama-Mississippi um, All-Star Game practices and showing, you know, different clips of guys running routes and whatever. And I'm Yeah, like, I saw that. Yeah, and he continues to show out like he has done since he was like a sophomore. He's good, man. He's good. <laughs> so, if you're interested in that, definitely check that out. Jerry Hamilton. Jerry. Uh, Darius Clemens, big in-home visit with him today or tonight from Brian Harson. Darius Clemens is a guy that we thought Auburn had a very good shot with early on in the season for the first probably half of the season. He came for an unofficial visit for the season opener, paid his own way, left there Auburn had a lot of confidence Oregon the home state team though you know it seemed like they pulled ahead and uh were in the driver's seat almost to the point where I I, I had I, I quit following Clemens yeah yeah I, I was done I was looking at Camden Brown I was looking at Squirrel White yeah and I think I think Auburn did too if we're being honest <laughs> I think they kind of said okay 
Okay, you're going to Oregon. We Moving got it. On. Good. Not going to waste any more time. Right. But with Oregon, Mario Cristobal going Mario Cristobal going to Miami. Things have opened up with Darius Clemens, Brian Harson going for an in. I don't know if it's in school or in home. Probably both. I think. Visit. I believe Keysaw will be in school, and then they will both go in home with Clemens. Well, there you go. Yep. I think that is the case. And then the other guy is your boy, Marquari- Marquarius Squirrel White, four-star yep. in-state wide receiver committed to Tennessee. Yep. Yep. Great coming in for Coming in for an official visit this weekend, or at least scheduled to. Yeah. And that one, um, just talking with some people at Auburn, they, they weren't real confident before. Now they feel a little bit more confident because he is coming on the visit. They think if they do a really good job, they could, they could have a great chance. You know, um, and this is a guy who came out maybe a week ago said Georgia is either going to be Georgia or Tennessee. That's correct. Mm-hmm. Auburn has squirreled its way into his recruitment. <laughs> uh, so receivers, man, a lot of a lot, lot of things going on there. A lot of things to track. Will Auburn go to the portal after signing day, which may not have any. Uh, whether or not they do won't have probably have an impact on how they do next Wednesday. I think that Auburn will say an experienced guy to come in um, as another option. Offensive guard, we've got Eston Harris listed in commitment. He's locked in. He said he was going to start out at guard. Mike, I mean, Mike Bobo. Drew Bobo is still committed, about as committed to Auburn as Tyree West is to Georgia. We absolutely don't expect a public decommitment. I don't know. I don't expect it. I think he'll just sign somewhere else next Wednesday. Ole Miss, Kentucky, maybe. And good for him. His, you know. I'd say uh, I'd say Georgia's still in it, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. I, I wouldn't count them out. All right. But definitely not Auburn, right? I'm going to erase that X I just put on Georgia. <laughs> uh, let me say this, too, about the offensive line recruiting. Obviously, it's, it's not a secret. There's not a, a – just a – big list of names right now and everyone's going okay well there needs to be a big list of names because there's not a lot of depth right well if there's one thing i've learned about brian harson and and his staff um quality over quantity is his is his style when it comes to getting players i don't think they're just going to grab somebody just to have them just to have another body somewhere yeah, depth is important, but I'm just telling you the way that I see him doing things. And he believes that Essen Harris is a quality guy. Mm. He believes Jalen Farmer, the Florida yeah. offensive line commitment, is a quality guy. And you have two other guys that have been on campus a couple times that have an, you know, a, a public offer from Auburn who may not make it in the class because – Oh, yeah. Just, you know, you got Malik Agbo – who visited officially visited for the Mississippi State game, and as Cooper, who is an in-state guy, who got the offer during the Georgia game, and and I don't know if they end up in the class. I, I really don't feel like Agbo is. We talked about that. I think they moved on from him a couple weeks ago, um, and as Cooper's still kind of waiting in the wings, but I just don't know if that's going to happen or not. Just depending on how the numbers go with everything else. But the point is, they have guys that they view as elite players and then they have guys they don't and they're not going to reach even if they need you know bodies like some perceive Jalen Farmer I don't know that he's visited Auburn yet is that right Cole yeah he was at the Iron Bowl oh that's right that's right that's right he got an offer on the way home or something didn't he yeah that's right right. (laughs) interesting to see if he takes an official visit he's another guy you know it could be a late ad maybe this weekend he is, if, he, if it to me, it's going to say a lot about Auburn and and who comes in this weekend and where others go. The last weekend before National National Signing Day, early Signing Day, is is telling in some ways. Uh, and we're going to get to that more on the defensive side. But before we move on from offense, we've got offensive tackle recruiting, which we've we, which we've seen an uptick in. We we know Auburn is going to be looking heavily at the portal for offensive tackles. We saw Miles, Miles Frazier, the big tackle. I mean, this kid is really good from what I've been told. He is. He is. Uh, Will Friend went in for an in-home visit with him on Monday. And 
uh, an official visit or some type of visit after the dead period ends, January the 13th is in the works. We saw two other guys from uh, Virginia, Bobby Haskins and Olu Olu. That's the best I can do. <laughs> yeah. That- but but uh, both of those guys certainly would be – would fit the mold that Auburn's looking. <clears throat> yeah, and, and there is interest, I'm told. Good. And then your boy uh, Jalen Grable from Jacksonville State. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tylen. Tylen, Tylen Grable. Grable, yes. That's what yeah. I said. Yeah, so yeah, there's four but- there's four good portal guys. Talking about a guy who was a quarterback in high school and then uh, went to Jacksonville State as an athlete at 6'7", 235. Ends up playing offensive line and and is an all American. Yeah, <laughs> pretty yeah. interesting deal there. All four of those guys you would expect to be able to come in and compete immediately for starting position at Auburn. Uh, all of those are going to be crucial. I know Frazier is going to be a mid year guy. I'm guessing the other three will be as well. Yeah, I think so. Um, so I'll, I'll be keeping an eye on those four guys and anybody else who fits that mold uh, entering the portal. Auburn's going to be. Uh, I would expect them to be contacting the offensive tackles moving on to defense defensive line. Woo. This is going to be interesting. Auburn's, you know, Auburn's in on a lot of these guys could go either way. We know Tyree West, the four-star defensive tackle from Tifton, I believe Tifton, Georgia coming in for an official visit today. It's a midweek visit. He's coming in. It's going to leave tomorrow. And I think he's going to Tennessee for an official visit this weekend. Florida state obviously continues to feel really good about him. And I don't have any reason to doubt them, but I know Auburn does too. And this kid's been in Auburn a couple of times. He's certainly going to be one to watch. I'm going to be curious to see what he has to say when he leaves on Thursday. Yeah, that's that's a really intriguing deal there. And and just because you know he's not signing with Georgia, and the perception is because you know they got somebody else they like better. Let me just tell you, this guy right here is he's real. a beast. Yeah, he's pretty good. He's he's an up, he's uh, just as good as what they've got, if not an upgrade, coming in. And Auburn has a commitment from Lynette, defensive tackle. I'm guessing he's a defensive tackle. That's what I think he's going to play. Caden Story said he yeah. can play anywhere along the off, uh, the defensive line, at least starting out, right? Yeah, he's he, you know he's put on, and I'm not he's put on some good weight, but he's his frame is just he, he can hold you know 280 plus pounds. So with that, you know, probably going to play more inside. I would think. Yes. Uh, we've got we, Tay Woody coming in for an official visit this yeah. weekend. Man. Or, Funny how, how the talk on him sort of died down, but, but man, that is really interesting. Tay Woody, the Florida State commitment, but he's been looking at Auburn. I mean, it's been kind of a roller coaster with him. There was a, there was a time maybe a month ago where I think both of us, and we're not in the, we're not alone in the boat here that, was pretty sure that Tay Woody was coming off. Yeah. And uh, he kind of died back down. Now it's kind of picking back up. If he actually comes into Auburn this weekend, you got to think you, you got to feel pretty good about Auburn's chances. Sure. Yeah. Um, you definitely cannot count them out. Another guy coming in this weekend, Ennis. Don't put a P in front of it. Sledgehammer. Someone, someone said. <laughs> Still, still funny. Thank someone you, said, someone said on our board that it was pronounced Inichi. Oh, for real? Maybe. Man, that know. makes so much more sense. I'm gonna have to ask him. I, we're just gonna have to ask him. Yeah. Oh my gosh, he probably he probably gets that a lot. He probably gets it a lot. Inichi, dude, that's it. It's got to be. It could, it could be that we just call him Sledge. That's not yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Which is a great, oh, name, by the way, great, great defensive line name is fantastic. Name? So you've got Woody coming in this weekend. We expected to. We got Inichi. Man, I like that. Much yeah, better. Sounds- I'm gonna go call him. I'm gonna go with that until he tells me differently. Inichi <laughs> Sledge coming in for a visit. He's from Louisiana. I think Auburn had an in-home bi- in-home visit with him Tuesday. Yes, uh, Tuesday. Nick Eason went and saw him. Yeah, Nick Eason, right. Auburn was in Louisiana heavily yesterday, Tuesday. Uh, so you got Niji Sledge, Tay Woody coming in. Curtis Perry came in two weeks ago, went to Texas this past weekend. Curtis Perry, Brian Harson will go for an in-home visit with him later this week. I'm not sure what day, but I know he has not been in there yet. Uh, yeah. So you've got Caden Story committed, Tyree West coming in, Sledge coming in, Woody coming in, and Perry 
pretty much an Auburn Alabama battle. There's four guys right there that Auburn could swing and miss on each and every one of them, or land one or two. <laughs> I'm yeah, it, yeah. And, and I don't know. Uh, what about uh, Jeffrey Emba? Did you did you? Oh, I forgot about him. You know, I know. Let me tell you something. Believe it or not, Missouri feels pretty good about him. Missouri, I've heard some confidence in Tennessee. In Tennessee, yeah, those two schools. With usually when, when when there's confidence in multiple camps, you know, it could go either way. It could go a lot of ways. I don't know how Auburn's feeling exactly. At when, when he officially visited, they felt pretty good, but you know, he still had three other visits to take, and and of course. You have to remember Auburn did get him at the biggest game of the year and the biggest atmosphere of the year, and he's just – he's not getting to see those atmos- game day atmospheres at the other places. That could play a part in it maybe. And, but, you know, he stayed for like four days. Now, he was off and on campus. Yeah. Joko Willis, the former teammate, he stayed with him down in LaGrange. His mom, Joko's from LaGrange. Yeah. And uh, stayed down there. So, there, there's a lot of personal connections there. He built a lot of relationships, formed some bonds with the players, the coaches – so, yeah, absolutely. I'm not counting Jeffrey Emba out whatsoever. Yeah. He's going back to France after this weekend, I think, and then we'll make his decision next week. He said December 19th, but the early signing period ends the 17th. I don't know if that affects him, but I don't think JUCOs can sign any later. It's not like they have an exception to sign. I think JUCOs have to sign mid-year right. guys too. December 17th is the final day for that. Um, now he could he could sign his letter of intent and then announce on the, on the nineteenth that he's already signed and where he signed, but uh, something something to track definitely. Yeah, uh, linebacker Powell Gordon is committed. Yes. We know uh, Robert Woodyard is committed to Alabama, but Auburn continues to heavily pursue him. Really feel good about a, a flip there on signing day. Yep, and Demario Tolan, four star linebacker from. Florida, who is committed to LSU. We know Cadillac Williams is going down to Florida to visit with him today, I believe. Yes. Uh, but he is rumored to be visiting LSU again this weekend. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, not sure what to make of that. Now, he was here for the Iron Bowl. He was. He was. And look, he's one of the, he's one of the more, I'm not going to call him quiet because he is pretty active on Twitter and he'll talk to you, but he's one of the people that's really hard to pin down where he might go. I yeah. Mean, George is in the mix too. I mean, you know, he went he officially visited there and just, you just don't know with him. I mean, I definitely too early to count Auburn out, even though he is taking an official visit back to LSU. We know the official visit with Auburn was, was as good as they could hope for. as good as he could hope for. Uh, just, you know, they're sending, Cadillac, they're sending Schmetting, they're sending a few coaches to see him. Schmetting going to? Schmetting, and I, I think, no, it's not Harson. Someone else is going to, but I can't remember um, off the top of my head. Bobby yeah. Mason. Because they're going to they're gonna go see Rim. And yeah, yes. Or today. Which brings us to the de- defensive backs. Ethers, right. Yeah, now, now, if if there's anywhere that Auburn may land a few guys that you feel pretty confident about, it might be defensive backs. Got you got Caleb Wooden committed. You've got Jacoby Albert committed. Guys that Auburn will visit today include Keontae Scott, Juco defense, uh, Juco cornerback, Marquise Gilbert, Juco safety. Uh, they visited Austin Osbury Monday night, four star cornerback from Louisiana. You've got they visited Miles Pollard Sunday yep. night, the four star defensive back from Tennessee who's committed to Michigan. And yep. then you've got four star LSU commitment, Jadarian Rim, who they'll visit again today. A lot of defensive back recruiting going on today. We know our at least expected Brian Harson, Derek Mason, Zach Etheridge, maybe even Trevon Reed. We saw the picture Auburn's account tweeted out yesterday. These guys are on the I wouldn't say on the road, they're in the air. They're flying all over the country. Yeah. Going, going to see Keontae Scott today, going to see Marquise Gilbert today, going to find a way to get to Jadarian Rim. And Jadarian Rim right now is expected to visit Auburn again this weekend Yep. for an official visit. 
I know LSU is pushing hard for him to come in to LSU instead of Auburn. So that's going to be something I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on where Jadarian Rim visits this weekend. It could be very telling as to where he'll sign on Wednesday. Yep. So, as we said, a lot of this stuff is up in the air right now. Auburn is in the mix for all of these guys that we've talked about. And when I say in the mix, I'm talking top two, top three at worst, right? Yeah. I mean, are there, is there anybody that we've talked about that it's not Auburn and LSU or Auburn and, you know, Alabama? Uh, uh, I think probably the Jeffrey Emba of all the guys, I would yeah. say is maybe top three. And the rest are top two with with, with either, uh, let's see, LSU, Tennessee, maybe maybe Squirrel Florida State, <clears throat> maybe not yeah, Squirrel White. There you go. White is yeah. Camden Brown is another one that's got a few in consideration. Yeah, so. right. Yeah, Camden Brown. It's not as cut and dry with him, but all of these guys, most of these guys, I guess, coming yeah. down to the wire. And it's going to be. It's going to be very telling, very interesting to see what happens this weekend, who visits and where they visit, what they have to say. And, man, Wednesday's going to be crazy. Wednesday's going to be – there's – I can't remember a signing day that's just so up in the air. I know. I know. I, I can't either. It's, it's crazy. Just so many different options that could, that could be possible. So many moving pieces. The spectrum being so wide – as to the potential finish, I don't. I don't expect a disastrous finish at all. Although it could be, but I don't expect that at all. I think there's a yeah. No, I don't either. And, and I, you know, I made it. I don't. I try not to make it sound that way. I just don't. I don't know what to expect fully. But again, don't feel like it's going to be a disaster. Right. Yeah. I think it's either going to be, you know, really, really good. Yeah. Or really good. <laughs> yeah, right. I, 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 that's the way I feel. I, I don't think it's going to be ho hum. I think it's either going to be really good or really, really good. Yeah, that's I'm I'm the same way on that. Folks, we're covering it all on Auburn Live. I, I I'm really uh, proud of the site, Cole. We're proud of you, man. We we've been doing a great job of keeping everybody best we can um, filled in on what's going on, where these guys are going. What, what Albert's plans are best we can. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, you should be. Uh, again, it's Auburn Live on three. Free week right now. Get you a free trial, seven-day free seven, free, seven day free trial. Or so, go ahead and sign up, man. Go ahead and sign up. You're not going to regret it. I promise you. We've got some great subscribers, man. We've, we're, we're growing and uh, only getting better. The, the, the network, the prediction machines coming out next week or in the next week. What was that? What was that that uh... – the guy for the the casino, the triple seven casino, you say, come join us. You can be a winner too. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, I, I was thinking of Alexander Shunano, bro. Oh yeah, call me Alabama. <laughs> come on, <laughs> come on with it, folks. Hey, we've got some great sus- subscribers, man. We've had some great posters. We've had some great threads over the past week. I'm telling you, you, you want to get in, you want to learn what's going on. I want to give a couple of how about you's. I got. Uh, we, we didn't do that. Monday, but I'm going to make up for it right now. Big how about you to uh, trop him, TR0 PM. He wants to t- take me to a rave, Cole. He wants to take me to a rave. Oh, you should do it. Well, you know, they're, they're, I, I'm not a quitter. There's only two things I've given up in this life. I mean, one was one of them is a rave, and the other is fat chicks at the supper club. <laughs> N- neither one of them agreed with me. Had to give them up. <laughs> well, uh, how about you to Leo the Tiger, who got my Ennis, don't put a P in front of it, joke before anybody else, Cole. Before me, and I was sitting yeah. right. Uh, two guys, McFraz and Pete Flank, man. These guys are loyal subscribers. We really appreciate them. Awesome dudes. Never met them, but I'm just assuming they're awesome dudes. Yeah. Uh, AUBD18. You know what he did? He, does, he, he doesn't listen to the show. He doesn't realize that there's an how about, how about you section. Oh, man. So a big how about you to AUBD18. Yeah. Oh, ye, ye of little faith. <laughs> and then uh, we've got first string, man. He, he's awesome. He's a big stick in this industry. He, he's a great he's a great yeah. poster. First string, big how about you to you. And then Jireo. Jireo? 
J I R A O. Yeah. He's he, he's he's a great poster man. He's all about yeah. some recruiting, supporting the site, man. We really appreciate him. Big how about you to him? And then one of my favorite names. We we, we like the names uh, on the message board, but this one kind of just stuck out to me. At Bad Tude T Brown. <laughs> hey, for anybody that doesn't know, T Brown had a bad attitude after the 2019 Iron Bowl. Was it 2019? Yeah. Might have been 17. Auburn rushed the field. Hell, it might have, no, it was uh, – yeah, I don't know. It was when Auburn rushed the field. Damn, I'm getting it old. Was I can't even, was it 17? I think it was 17, yeah. Auburn fan rushed the field, and he punched some little kid. <laughs> I told him he had a bad attitude, T-Brown. He did. He had a bad attitude. All right, folks, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to meet back here Friday morning with Hope. We're going to have a modcast. We're going to go over things, maybe have some uh, a clearer vision on what's going on for this weekend – clear vision on who's visiting, who's not, where everybody else is going, maybe have a better idea of what's going on. I know I'm going to update the hot board, one today, one tomorrow. Uh, try to get – man, it's going to be tough, though, man. There's a lot of 50-50s out there right now, so don't hate on me for that, man. I don't want to yeah. give anybody any false hope. Uh, I want yeah. everybody to stay grounded. Let's see what happens this weekend and have a better – I expect to have a much better – um, shit, I, I expect it, but hell, uh, you know, it's probably going to be tougher to get information out next week. But anyways, if you're not signed up again, man, Auburn live on three, we are doing it big for Cole Pinkston. I am Jeffrey Lee. Stay out of the left lane. If I pass you on the right, you're an idiot. How about you? <laughs>